Hey, what is up guys? Epic Pokemon TCG here, and today guys, I have a deck profile for you. And this is going to be a deck that I've been working on uh, quite a bit uh, over the past couple weeks, and I'm not just saying that just to try to hype the list up or something like that, but uh, I've been running so many different variants of this deck that it's kind of insane. Uh, I had a 1-1 one, one Espeon line in here at one point, and by that I mean like 1 Espeon, 1 uh, Psychic Energy, the GX, and... Then I was running this Parallel City Delinquent variant, I was running Wide Lens, and then I tried the Assault Vest, uh, I was trying a, like, Pukumuku, like, I ran, like, two or three Pukumuku, and, like, I don't know, I just went, like, a lot of different ways with this deck, and I didn't like the Pukumuku at all, by the way. Um, but yeah, this is just what I have right now, and... Yeah, this will be a little odd, and I will kind of talk about like why I went about some of the ways that I did. Uh, but I also run like a one-one-one line of these three here, uh, just to see which one I might like, and just see like which one like I might not need or will need more than anything. Because you can make valid arguments for all three of them. Uh, they, you know, just the Jolteon being really good against like Evital and things like that. Uh, the Vaporeon being very good against Volcanion. And then, of course, the Flareon is really good against Lurantis and Decidueye. Um, but yeah, I mean, all three of them have their own pros and cons to them and things like that. And, of course, I have the four Eevee here. But to give you guys a little idea what Umbreon does, uh, because this is a deck profile and I need to talk about it. Uh, it has Strafe, which is 30, and you may switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. And then it has Shadow Bull, it's the exact same thing as Night Spear from Dark Rye EX back in the day. 90 and then 30 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Uh, that's why I was running uh, uh, Wide Lens, is because Jolteon can just help that out make that really good. And just like all three of them can really make that attack pretty sick. And yeah. But uh, Eevee is actually why this deck I feel like is absolutely insane. Uh, because it does have speed in itself. With energy evolution, basically, whenever you play an energy onto Eevee uh, from your hand, you can search your deck for a uh, Eevee Lucian that is the same type as the energy you just attached to it. And so, uh, you attach a Dark to Eevee, and you get to search for Umbreon, and you know, so on and so forth. Uh, and pretty much with that, you attach a Dark to Eevee, and you evolve an Umbreon, and you can already attack with it with Strafe, which is actually pretty good. Um, I really like Umbreon GX. Uh, I actually ordered a fourth one. In case you're wondering about that, uh, just to try it out. I only have three right now, but I ordered a fourth one. And yeah, I feel like this deck has a lot of potential. I feel like it can do a lot of different things, and it's really good. Um, I'm going to explain here why I took out the Wide Lens variant here. Uh, because I do run a 2-2 two -two Zorark. Uh, I like this combination. I like the combination of Umbreon and Zorark. Uh, because I feel like you have an attacker that can hit for just one attachment and do a ton of damage to your opponent uh, and that's Zorark. Zorark's always been that Pokemon that can just do a ton of damage and when you pair it up with three Pokemon that allow you to hit pretty much like some of the most popular Pokemon in the format that definitely does help you out there and then you have one that's also a heavy hitter but can also soften Pokemon up on the bench which is actually really good. Um, I've been thinking about taking this deck kind of in a direction to where I have more stuff to strafe into and so I'll get to that here in a second, but um, yeah, Mind Jack 10 and then 30 for each, uh, one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, so if they have three Pokemon, that's going to be uh, 100 damage, and then if you're hitting for weakness or something, that's going to be 200, which is actually pretty sick. Uh, and then of course it has Stand In, uh, basically you can just bring Zorark up off the bench, which is really good. Now uh, the next two cards I've been really experimenting with, uh, I've been going back and forth, uh, I originally had two Tauros, uh, just so I can strafe into a Tauros, and then I had two Fright Night Evital, uh, because I was like, you know, if I run into an issue with Fighting Fury Belt, and, you know, like, I hit for weakness, but I'm not able to knock it out because of Fighting Fury Belt, you know, I was trying, I don't know, i just been going back and forth with the two. Uh, I definitely can make arguments for both of them being really good in the deck. Uh, one of the issues I do see with Tauros, of course, is if you want, if you're in a matchup where... Uh, you would favor Dark Call GX being like, you know, the preferred GX attack you want to do. Then uh, Tauros loses a lot of power because you can't use Mad Bull. Um, or if you Mad Bull, then like you're pretty late in the game, you can't, you know, Dark Call or something like that. Um, it just kind of becomes a toss up of which GX attack you want to commit to and what matchups and such. Uh, but 
I, I just like the idea of being able to strafe and then just bring up a Tauros and then saying, you know, go ahead, hit me. You know, I can do some damage back to you. Uh, but also, I like Pitch Black Spear because you can 60-60 and then uh, with one of the variants I was running, I was running a thick uh, Evatol line here. I think I was running two or three. And then I had Umbreon. And so I was 60-60 and then I would have Umbreon with a wide lens doing 60 to stuff that it was weak to. And uh, I was kind of feeling that list, um, but the problem was with Zork, I was just kind of running into the issue of like I would draw the wide lens and I would be going aggro Zork or something like that. So um, I do want to say that the wide lens variant was actually pretty fun. Uh, but next up, I have two Shaman EX here with setup just for consistency reasons. And this was another reason why I kind of like the Parallel City variant. Uh, it was because I can just get this sucker off the bench. Uh, for some reason, playing Parallel City in this deck makes me a little uncomfortable. I, I don't know why, but it, it's just weird. Uh, but next up, we have these supporters. I haven't really been changing these up too much because I feel like this is just a pretty decent uh, line to go with. But uh, four Sycamore, three in, and then we got two Lysander, and then one Pokemon Ranger. So I'm not completely locked out of my DCE whenever I face against Giratina. And then, of course, we have the four VS Seeker to go along with our supporters, just so you can keep reusing them. Uh, here is something I'm also working on is the ball count. Uh, I'm running four Ultra 2 level. Uh, I had three level before I did this video, and I took it out uh, for a Reverse Valley. And I took something else for, I think I took out Lily and Level Ball for two Reverse Valley. Because that was originally what I was thinking about doing. But um, the reason why I was running a high count of level ball was because, of course, it could search out my Eevee. And it was pretty much a higher chance of me hitting uh, one of my three uh, evolutions that I might need for certain matchups. It just kind of increased that chance of me hitting those uh, pretty early on. But uh, the 4 Ultra Ball is just pretty standard. just allows you to pretty much search whatever you want at any given time. Uh, but the 3 level ball... Uh, was definitely something I was looking at and then I also was like this might be overkill this might be a little too much and so I'm gonna go with two see how I like it see if, if you know to see if it's good yeah that's where I'm going with that next up we have four trainers mail uh, the reason why I was going with four is because I was really wanting to fetch out those level ball and just really try to make this deck as consistent as I could and uh, this was also a really good way for me to hit those assault vest and white lens and such uh, then I eventually just kind of reverted back to this floatstone thing because I, <laughs> I'm running Zorark. Uh, I wanted to take this deck pretty much in the most straightforward way possible. And I didn't want to go for like this crazy teched out nonsense. I just wanted to go with a deck that was uh, pretty like straight to the point because that's the decks that I perform best with. It's just the decks that just you attack and that's it. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, the Flood Stones pretty much just allow me to free retreat and go about it freely with Zorark and such. And then, of course, I also run one Escape Rope just for a switching card. And then one uh, Super Rod. Uh, this is really good. I love this card for this deck because uh, if these are really good in your matchup, you can just kind of keep reusing them. And, of course, you can shuffle in your lines and stuff. Uh, I even considered at one point running Brock's Grit. That's how much I was like looking into it because... I was like, getting Pokemon back in here uh, for certain matchups just seems like really, really strong. And so, yeah, I eventually just went with Super Odd. Uh, to Reverse Valley, uh, because I noticed that sometimes numbers can get weird, and I, I just kind of was like, you know what, I have a Counter Stadium, and I could do a little more damage. Uh, I considered a 1-1 split of Parallel City in this, but then I decided against it. Um, really, this is just so I can do a little extra damage, and... Basically, like when you look at it, if you attack with Umbreon, then you can do 200 if you're hitting for weakness, or just a solid 100, and then you can just like 100, 100, and and then Zora can hit a little harder too, which could which could make his numbers hit pretty uh, consistently and just kind of hit for like certain numbers really well. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I just have to play test it a little more. Uh, but this was kind of the stadium that I was leaning towards more than anything uh, overall. Uh, but basically the reason why Umbreon caught my eye 
Uh, the reason why this card, I just was like, holy crap. Because when you look at it, uh, I'm getting into the energy now. Uh, you attach it to your hand. I just missed that completely. Test out, oh yeah, you test out with your hand. You have the 60 HP Pokemon. You can search your deck, and then boom. You have a 200 HP Pokemon like that. And so I really liked it, and I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to run this deck, what route I'm going to go for it, and just kind of go from there. But the energy is pretty uh, simple. We have 8 Dark and then 4 DCE. But I guess for the variant that we have here, uh, the list is going to be pretty simple. You just kind of have like random attackers that you can do stuff with at certain times that benefit you. Uh, you have, of course, you have Friday Night Evital. This could be really good for the 60-60 uh, to soften up Pokemon EX. And of course, uh, Friday Night just shuts off tools. So it gets rid of um, Spirit Links, which can, you know, which can slow down Mega Evolution decks. It can get rid of uh, Bloodstone, Fighting Fury Belt, etc. It's pretty much everything, and it just shuts those down. And then, of course, you have Tauros, which is uh, pretty much a card that you attack it and you pay for it. And at some points, this could even make your opponent not want to attack, which is pretty funny. And that's Mad Bull GX, and so if you hit it for a decent amount of damage, you're pretty much guaranteeing yourself a knockout. And uh, it's kind of funny to strafe into this. Uh, but for that strategy, I feel like I might need to bump it up to another one, which is uh, where I'm kind of like on the fritz about of whether or not I want to keep it in here or if I'm going to go back to the wide lens uh, variant that I had because of how awesome that was just hitting with Friday Night Evital and then uh, hitting with Umbreon, which was really fun. And then, of course, you have Zorak here. Uh, Zorak can just do a ton of damage, especially... Uh, there's, there's decks in this format now that pretty much need uh, huge benches and uh, these two as a combination together uh, is very very powerful against Volcanion and that's really like what I wanted to do with that um, Zora can also do a ton of damage against the Decidueye uh, that is if you're able to evolve it quick enough that is another issue I was just you know really looking at uh, I was even considering maybe like a Wally or something like that uh, because as soon as like as soon as Decidueye is going to figure out what you're doing, they're going to try to pick off your EVs, which is another reason why I was trying to uh, get those level ball in here, just so I can you know grab like two or three EVs, hopefully, uh, just maybe, hopefully, and at least have one on there. Uh, but yeah, and then Jolteon, uh, Jolteon is just good because not only can you hit uh, Evatol, uh, you can hit one of the most popular cards in the entire format, and that's Shaman. Uh, and you can just help yourself have pretty much a guaranteed two prizes throughout the game, which is really good. And then Umbreon, uh, just 90, and then you can hit stuff for 30 and soften it up a little bit. And then, of course, you have the Strafe Attack, uh, which uh, you may switch, which is a cool thing that they added with that. Uh, because this deck right now doesn't have very many things you can kind of uh, strafe into. Uh, the, the version I have right now uh, that you're seeing is pretty much just a straight up kind of I, I don't even really know what you would call it just pretty much a deck that can hit for a ton of damage uh, if it can get set up which is I will not lie it's another issue I've been running into uh, that's why there's like so many random basics in here is because I just kind of kept mulliganing I wasn't really drawing stuff and then uh, the level ball was kind of in here and then like I was running like a higher supporter count I ended up trimming that down a little bit but yeah, I, I've been monkeying with this deck for two weeks now, and I've ran several different variants of it. My binder is all shifted around and weird. I have cards sitting on my desk uh, just because of how, like, how many things I've been swapping out of here. But yeah, that's what I have right now. That's, that's the deck I'm currently running, and I will more than likely switch it up. And then if I switch it up to a different variant completely, then you guys will see that on my channel because I've been running so many, it's it's insane. But yeah, uh, that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like it, subscribe for some more content, and make sure to stay tuned for this deck. It'll be on my channel this week too. Uh, I want to apologize for the little hiatus that I took. I haven't been uploading here over the past few days. I just wanted to take it easy, have a little break, uh, enjoy some Call of Duty, and just relax and that's about it. But if you guys want a video, make sure to like it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. You much appreciate it. And this is Epic Pokemon TCG signing out. Take care, guys.